you there. Thank you for watching. And welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 6v6 custom match here on the most amazing Neuroxys map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the Northwest, ending with Team 2 in the Southeast. And with 12 players to introduce, I'll slow it down to negative 3. So we have enough time for early action and introduction. Starting off with Team 1, Southernmost player in Pac-Man Yellow. It is Yzma, 98, going first land as a Seraphim. They are a 1,200. To the north in Imperial Grey, we have Amon-Ra going first land as a UEF. He is a 1,900, the highest ranked player on Team 1 and in the game overall. And to his east, the other great player, this time in Batman Grey, it is Tolsti. For OK, going first line as another UEF here. He is a 1300 in Tropical Ocean Blue to his east. We have Therabes. He's going first line as a Seraphim at 1400 rating. In Emerald Green, we have Shri Sh 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 Shika. Something like that. Going first line as a Cyber. And he is a 1200 as a 1500. Sorry, 1500. Not 1200. 1500. And last one, these for Team 1. It is Neo 2000 going first air as a Seraphim. He is a 1200 in glow in the dark green. So for Team 1 side of the map, they have three Seraphim, two UEF, and one Cybrans, which means they have no access to Aeon technology. Starting off with Team 2's northernmost player in Ruby Red, it is Legend Lord 2 going first land as an Aeon. He is a 1600, the highest ranked player on Team 2. In Chevy Crimson here to his southeast, it is Babel going first air as another Aeon here. He is a 1300. In Stitch Blue, we have General Hat Helm going first land as a third Aeon here for Team 2. He is an 1100. As a UEF here for Team 2 is Kaiser Wilhelm, the first of his name, going first land as a UEF. He is a 1500 in orange to color orange. In Snow White to the north, we have Kohler Gerklack. <laughs> Koloiaker Klaus. I, I I was pointed out that I was saying his name wrong. I will do better to try to pronounce that name correctly. I think I'll just call him Klaus for short. He's going first land, second air. Again, in Snow White as a 1300 side. But, and last but not least for Team 2, it is Kefa going first land as a fourth Aeon here for his team. He is in Light Oak Tan. And again, he is a 1400 going first land. So for Team 2 side of the map, we have four Aeon one Cybern and one UEF, which means they do not have access to Seraphim tech. Team 1, of course, does not have access to Aeon technology. Let's take a look at the game here in terms of Reclaim. We have for 12 players to scoop up 35,000 Reclaim, which is about 36. So we'll make it an even 36 to make it 3,000 mass per player to scoop up. It is a ton of mass to scoop up. A lot of it is in the middle section of the map, but there is a decent amount in the kind of close range isness of that main base grouping and speaking of mass oh we do have a first upgrade here for tolsty he's going for a left drone probably will go for a right drone next but sometimes i have seen only one drone build anyway we see one two three four five six seven trimax positions here on team two side of the map with a decent amount in the middle to be fought over between both of these teams i'd say definitely these ones right here and definitely these ones and these ones are a little bit further away so we might see like one here one there and then maybe that'll be a fire base kind of in between both of them i eh, maybe it'll be definitely of course the trimax positions definitely sought after here for both of these teams let's go ahead with introductions out of the way speed this game up back to zero and go ahead and see what our players are up to. Again, I did mention that drone upgrade here started for Tolstie getting up to 80%. The drone upgrades are really quick. Nothing really uh, too taxing on the eco. And it obviously does allow them to kind of send the engineer off to be able to like, oh, grab a, a reclaim. Oh, do this. So go assist this engineer or whatever the case may be. He will only do the left drone. And you can see it kind of nestled on, on his left shoulder there. And there it goes. The orders have been sent for him to be... Going after, looks like, uh, Reclaim. Yeah, moving here and then going after Reclaim. And that's just what that little drone is going to be doing here for at least the foreseeable future. We do see Team 2 and Team 1's comms moving to the center of the map. Team 1 has three of them, uh, four of them that have left their main bases so far. Team 2 at 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. 
We do see a transport out here for Team 2's Babel going after again. That reclaim here on the eastern side of the map. Going to drop some engineers. And they're going to drop them here for that 150 rock here to the northwest. He probably really wants to grab that Trimax position as well. Try to deny it here for his opponent. But there already are strikers. Not strikers. Excuse me. Mantis on the way here to deal with that little engineer drop that he doesn't even know about. But will intentionally deal with without even meaning to do that. There are a couple of mass points on plateaus, but there's not really... I mean, there's one in the back line, and there's two right here, but that's really it. There's a couple of plateaus accessible via the ground level. I call it ground level just because, you know, comms can just walk up. But for the most part, all these little small plateaus, maybe they'll offer some sort of advantage. I mean, we might see, like, an artillery base up here or here. But these smaller ones, there's not really a lot of territory to really build a whole lot on them, so I don't really see them being useful at, in terms of like higher ground advantages. And that drop, of course, as I mentioned, does get destroyed. Those engineers trying to finish off that T1 facility. Will they finish it off? Yes, they will, and we'll immediately building some flares to deal with those mantis. One engineer does kill, air quotes, kill off a mantis, and we do see those flares starting to be spammed up to try to dissuade these mantis from fighting. But there's a couple of more mantis coming in to reinforce. This could end up good for the most part here for Babel, but there's still just units constantly streaming in here for Sheik, so I don't see that really happening anytime soon. It was a nice attempt. It's good to see that the factory, of course, did get finished, but unfortunately, I feel like that's just mass burning a hole in Team 2's pocket. And we are starting to see the front line tr start to formalize a little bit. We do see Team 2's Kefka has either sent engineers or dropped them off, one or the other. And it's claimed this Trimex position only has one of the three mexes. Don't know if that's due to in uh, interference from Team 1 or not. But, uh, I mean, that engineer could go after two T1 mexes, get four more mass income here for him. But pumping out those T1 Aurora, he is going for that try. Uh, facility around one max we can again assist them in reducing the mass consumption of the units that are going to be built out of those factories and besides that i don't really see a huge effort from team one or team two to focus either you know on one lane or the other the middle is kind of just there i feel like our players are gravitating more towards the either the northeastern side or the southwestern side this kind of middle valley area is kind of just there yeah there's a couple of comms moving in that direction but i'll be interested to see if they stay there or go more west and trying to intercept both tolsty and almond Ra. i feel like that's where they're gonna go eventually but they're just intercepting those units outbound from team one for the time being and it does look like that facility was taken out, that T1 mix, and then was, I guess it was destroyed and then rebuilt again. And that engineer is going to go, well, let's just get some reclaim. Not worry about a whole lot. I do love the radar on the upper plateau. It protects it against any T1 spam that just kind of walks up and says hi to it. I think artillery could still hit it, but it just might be out of range. I don't know the exact range of the artillery offhand, so I couldn't say one way or the other, but it could be safe. So if it is great if not it'll be there for now we do see team one's darabas being forced back by legend lord's forces aurora and his calm trying to force their way into team one's main front line we do see darabas building a nice little team one pd for protection and for a fallback position love to see that again layered defenses also love the team one pd over here again trying to assist with some Defensive measures in the middle. It does look like two comms will sit here for the time being on Team 2, both Kaiser and General Hathelm. I see them play a lot together, so it doesn't surprise me that they are together on the map currently. But we see a huge push outbound from Team 1. Sheik forcing back Babel. Babel just receiving pain today. That's his uh, main dish that he is having to consume. We do see again Sheikah. He's... Again, forcing his way onto Team 2 side of the map. And also, with the assistance of Darabas, he's kind of just forcing all of those units from Team 2's Legend Lord to move eastward. That could open things up for Team 1's Darabas, but he A, doesn't have any units besides his comp. B, doesn't have any upgrades. And C, is just building PD and walls. So, not really building any facilities. He's going to go for a radar, but that's it. 
But the advanced range upgrade is on the way here for Legendary at 33%, and he's in the middle of nowhere with no assistance. He does have some units somewhere nearby, but he could easily be overwhelmed, and that upgrade could get canceled. So, well, it could get canceled if there are units enough nearby, which there are currently not. So, he's fine. A little bit aggressive, but again, it does you know, allow him to lock down a decent section of the middle of the map. We do see some progress here for Team 2's combination comp of Kaiser and General. We're moving forward. There's one T1 PD, but that's not going to stop Kaiser once he gets into range. We do see gun damage range coming on the way here for Tolsti in the west. Same here with speed and range here for Yzma. I do my best to say it like it is uh, from an Emperor's New Groove. I, th I forget who says it like that. I think actually Yzma does say it like, no... I think she did. Uh, yeah, I think Yzma does say it. I, I, I need to watch that movie again. It's been a while. I need to sit down and watch it. My work schedule's been super busy, so I've just been, uh, you know, working and recording videos and then going to sleep and then waking up. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably watch it over the weekend. We do see Sheikah going for stealth. Not even gun first. Going for stealth. Very interesting. Wants to be hidden off radar, but you know, I feel like... I mean, there's a lot of forward momentum for the T1 units, but Team T2 is starting to be, uh, you know, on people's minds here. So I don't think Stealth is going to cut it for the time being. And he will go for Gun. And Stealth is done. That does, again, get one step to Nano. So maybe he thinks Stealth, then Gun, then Nano. If in that sense, then maybe. I, I don't know. I feel like Gun, then Stealth, then Nano is probably the better way to go. You get a little bit more use out of your comm. There from Commander here of Derebus might receive some pain from Legend Lore's advanced range upgrade here in the eastern side of the map. And that uh, that nano repair is going to go on the way, but the overcharge kills off most of those engineers and a lot of the HP off that T1 PD. That nano repair comp is not going to finish. And he's going to sit at range and just deal tons of damage. Aurora coming into range as well to take out Derebus's hit points. And he will be forced to cancel that upgrade and if he keeps going for it he will die here so far i mean he's just this is thousands of hit points he's not going to get back anytime soon overcharge kills off the rest of the hp on that pd and unfortunately here for Darius, he will be forced back tons of advantage here for legend lore we do see some units some t2 ilshis starting to be the main tank here for team one's Darius. but again trying to slow down uh, legend lore and prevent him from overrunning Darabus's position, but the units here for Legend Lord just come in and just swap that eastern side. And that western side, tons of veterans here for Team 2's Legend Lord. Definitely not the best engagement here for Team 1. If he was going to retreat, he should have done that by now, but if he comes into range of Legend Lord again, I think he will die. I think he realizes that and goes, Nah, I'm not. No, nope, I'm good. See you, bye. Uh, second, please, says Legend Lord. Looks like he might have had to go to the bathroom, whatever the case may be. And I do appreciate that, uh, you know, th the community is very like, hey, life happens. You know, you got a dog barking or, you know, something at the door or whatever the case may be. And you got to go take care of it for a second. I do appreciate that. And it obviously gives everybody else like, okay, what's going on? What do I need to do? Okay, I need to move units here that or do this queue. It kind of gives them ability to kind of just slow the game down for a second. So I, I do appreciate that when players are very like, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it kind of thing. And don't just like, hey, why is it paused? Da -da 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 -da, kind of thing. And we do see somewhat of a resurg resurgence here for Babel. Again, hasn't gone for any upgrades on board that commander. Probably should go for at least range and speed, the first upgrade at a minimum. Just to kind of combat the gun com of Sheik. Again, has to be very careful of that. And I'm s I feel like I'm also pronouncing the name correctly. I do apologize. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't even know what language that's from. So I say Sheik because it kind of looks like Sheik. So, again... Anyone down in the comments, please let me know what that name, how you pronounce the name, and I'll do my best to try to retain that information and say it the next time that they appear on the channel. Tolsti versus Klaus here in the middle. It is Gun and Drone versus Gun. So Team 2's Cyber player is not going to win that battle anytime soon. Gun damage range on the way here for Kaiser in the middle. With a lot of engineering support. Probably might go for T2 as well, just right off the bat. Go for the extra hit points. 
They have secured a decent amount of territory in the middle of the map and trying to, again, force their way to just poke and prod at Team 1's defenses. There's, again, not a lot in the middle for either team, but because there's two comms here for Team 2, there's a lot of firepower here, a lot of maneuverability to either go north or south. And they might just go south. Oh, look at that. T2 is coming on the way here for guys. It's like he heard me from the ether or something. And like, hey, that's a good idea. I should do that. Those coming on the way here for Klaus here, 59%. Engineers probably were assisting him for a second, but they're going to be called elsewhere. We do see some units starting to stack up here for Tolsty. He has some pillars and a couple of Lobos as well as... No shields yet, but uh, wouldn't be surprised to see some Skyboxers in the mix here pretty shortly. There is... No, oh, no, that's an Archer, not a Skyboxer. But again, AA is very important. Team 3 Air is online for Team 1's Amon Ra. And Team 2 should have, yep, T3 air in the form of Kaiser Wilhelm, the first of his name. Doing another player on Team 1 with T3 air. Yes, there's a second player. It is Neo 2000 and, no, not 2000. Yeah, just 2000, not 2001. For some reason I want to say Neo 2001. I don't know why. Maybe that's a space odyssey. Maybe that's where my brain's going. Amon Ra going for a tactical missile in the middle. It's going to be very, very powerful. Obviously, we've seen the past couple of games where Tactical Missile is very, very useful. Bashika just walks down the comm of Team 2's Legend Lore, and that will be the first kill of the game at 13 and a half minutes. Team 2 at 5 players left, Team 1 at 6 players left. Useless side players says Legend. I wouldn't say useless. Again, probably should have gone for speed and range on board. Speed and range, not speed and range. Because it's an Aeon comm. I, it's... Not that it's annoying, but there should be like a, I don't know, a way to differentiate speed and range versus speed and range. But of course, everyone, m mostly everybody knows what I'm talking about when I do say A on speed and range. ASF's flying over the top here for Team 1's Amon Ra, protecting his commander. He has gun, and he's going for gun, has T2, and now missile launcher. Very beefy, that commander. Lots of attack by Kaiser, and General Hadham have diverted south. To try to assist on this western front, like I said, they probably would. Probably should have gone north, to be fair. We do see Team 1's Daredevis moving in, has Nano and Gun. A couple of Ilshis as some personal guards. Tactical Missile is outbound. It's probably going for T2 Mexes at a minimum. Some team, actually, that's Triads are going to be built. Yep. Oh! That gets sniped by that Zapper. That Tactical Missile is not effective. Team 2 loses a little bit of territory here for Kefka, but yeah, it's a couple of T2 ill. She's not a huge issue. Not like 30 of them. There's only like four. So not really a huge issue for, for him. He does have T2. Actually, has T3. He'll probably go for, yep, he's going for Harbingers, so I will definitely deal with those ill. She's very, very quickly. Now, with three comms here on the southwestern side here for Team 2, this line of T2 units with a couple of, well, not a couple, but a lot of T1 support is going to be forced back and killed off. Lots of a lots of HP going to be built up due to the veterancy on these commanders. Kaiser is in the ye low yellows, has to be very careful, has to fall back. Will almost kill off that one PD. I'm on Ra going to focus him down. We do see Klaus trying to intercept those shots from Tolsti to assist this demon of Kaiser from retreating. All of the units from Klaus moving in from the east to assist. Amon Ra, of course, has T2 gun and missile launcher. Missile launcher is outbound, trying to target Kaiser. Does miss. It was a good attempt, though, I will admit, trying to target a comm on the move. But, uh, of course, probably Team 2 knew about that for now. Amon Ra trying to assist in this, you know, defend his team of Tolsti. But Tolsti receiving a ton of firepower in the yellow. Has to cancel his T2 upgrade. And General Hatham will push both of these players back. Amon Ra in the red as well. There he goes. And he is dead, and Tolstein might just be a double kill here for Team 2. And this is surely needed here for them as they were down a player for a little bit of time. And there he goes. And now is a huge opening here for Team 2 on this western side. The player of Yzma probably should start retreating because with an assassination like that, probably thinking, yeah, I probably should fall back at some point. Because if those three comms decide to just walk west, they're dead. Just Yzma's dead. Flat out, you know, no coming back from that, just dead. There's just not a lot of defenses and units online to d deal with three comms, especially if one's repping up as we speak. As T2 gun, speed and range, and gun and nano. So, again, a lot of firepower here in that western side of the map. 
But there's a lot of forward momentum here for Team 1's Darabes trying to punch into Babel's defenses on this eastern side. Is going for speed now, has range on board, is now dealing with missile launchers to the north. And it's kind of just being sandwiched between both Sheik and Darabes. We even see some units outbound from Team 2 to come and assist this uh, defensive measure, but don't know if it's really going to work. Send Harb, says Legend Lore to the eastern side here for Babel, trying to, again, assist from beyond the grave with a man in the chair, as I also call him, to do his best to, again, help his team to victory. Because even if you die in the first minute of the game, if your team wins, you still win. So there is some uh, stock in trying to assist your team in winning throughout the rest of the game, even if you're currently not uh, alive. Or not uh, reporting a friend or foe uh, tag. Or however you want to phrase it. Darabus receiving a shot <laughs> to the arm by a missile from a T2 unit from that uh, even song. <laughs> we'll go, nah, nah, that's fine. I'm going to get that T1 max. I'm not going really to have to worry about it. We do see another player on Team 2 going for air. This is General Hathelm. So both Kaiser and General Hathelm going for air. Very mimicking what's going on on Team 1's side of the map. T2 air headquarters. Oh, that's a Cybern one. Okay, I was like, why does he have a T2 other facility? But we do see th all of their factions, at least that T2 air for the time being. Wouldn't be surprised to see that go T3 air. Of course, there's always the argument of, oh, the, Ser the Seraphim ASF are the best, or the UEF ASF are the best. I haven't really seen one science, like, video one way or the other of which one is the best I, ASF or ASF or ASF or ASF so like strat bombers I guess that's a different scenario because you have revenants who can you know use their stealth field and stuff like that so it doesn't make that much of a difference but uh, it's again more of what faction do you use okay they have access to this technology okay how can I use it okay cool I'll just go from there and not really worry about I have to have this tech every single time I play that kind of thing we do see ASFs moving in to intercept those bombers in the east. There's a lot of T1AA that's been spammed up. And we do see T3 land starting to be the main stage here for both teams. We do see a lot of units coming in to try to go after this tricom position underneath one shield. Tons of engineers just repping up Kaiser Wilhelm's calm. Once they're, you know, get him up to full HP. He's going to go for T3. That would definitely assist in that chunk of hit point or regen. Could go for Nano to shorten that... Uh, Regen, but probably is thinking about going for Missile Launcher. Both of the UEF players on Team 1 have been killed off. The Seraphim ones can go for Missile Launcher. They cannot go for Billy Nuke. So that is an advantage that Team 2 now only has, that being in the hands of Kaiser. And just Firebase Wars here in the southwest between Kefka and Yzma. Yzma not really receiving the uh, best scenario here. Shields are down, going for Nano. Uh, would not recommend going for Nano while there's artillery, especially the Aeon variety with the little acid, poison, whatever it's called. Miasma. I guess you could call it Miasma. They are called Miasmas, to be fair. And it's just ripping through this defensive line very, very quickly. Like I said, these three comms could just walk rest and kill Yzma, but the downside is it would give another player on Team 1 another base. And that's very dangerous. We've seen how players can just get juiced up on a couple of other fallen teammates' base and just rip through the game. So, again, very carefully. You have to play it very tongue-in-cheek and go for a, a total annihilation style of just kill everything that that player owns. That way, if they die, they give nothing over versus just an assassination of we just got to kill all the comms and then that's it. Which, to be fair, at any point in FAF, that is a possibility of just killing off all the the comms on the enemy team and you win but again when full share is active it's not as the most appealing idea as it probably sounds like it is but at 21 minutes in the game let's take a look at mass income and overall statistics here for the game team one at 835 team two at 860 pretty comparable between the teams maybe team two leading a little bit more but we do see a lot of territory that should be Team 2's is being owned or at least occupied by Team 1. And very similar things going on here in the southwest. And, of course, it's about 50-50 when you take all of that into account. Team 1 at 4 players left. Team 2 at 5 players left. The highest 
eco player on both teams is Shika at almost 400, which makes sense. Dual base. And they even. Mm, maybe even triple base. Oh, yeah, triple base. Yeah, it's triple base. And team two, that would probably be a tie between Klaus and Kefka. And one player is focused on the middle and the west. Essentially, both these players will eventually just meet up over here and go after Yzma. That's what I would do, just try to solidify an entire side of the map, that being the south or the west or the east, and then push, essentially hoeing your opponent into a corner and just slowly just collapse their territory from the outside, essentially just poke and prod them until they just cannot hold it any longer. The missiles on the northern side here for Sheik just pushing back Babel. We have Darabas, hasn't fallen back yet, 22 minutes. It's usually where most comms do kind of retreat in the face of trap bombers, gunships, whatever the case may be. Just a bunch of T3 that runs in and says hi. We do see a couple of T3 and T2 units online here for Babel, as well as an assisting force of some rhinos and mantis here from Klaus. Those could be sent in to kill off these units, especially the T3. We do see Darabas actually going to come and say hi. I don't know if he knows about those units here from T No, he does know about it, so he doesn't think they'll actually move. This could be big for Klaus. If he moves in and assists this west this uh, force of Babel, it could be enough to either kill or force Erebus to fully retreat. But unfortunately, these units are not going to be given orders, and both of the Mantis have been taken out. There are some Obsidians in the mix, so a ton of hit points for that calm. With Darabas to chew through, Overcharge takes out the Missile Launchers as well. Really, these units aren't really being microed. So that's definitely unfortunate here for Team 2 on that eastern side. Forces from Team 1, Sheikah, are retreating in the face of, again, just the constant pushing from Team 2. We see just Firebasing constantly just kind of inching its way forward. Ne advanced nano repair going on the way for Yzma in the west. Gives a lot of hit points, but of course is takes a lot of eco to build. And the fact that it roots him to the spot. We don't see that tri-com position anymore. They've kind of split their separate ways for the time being. One com, that being Hathelm pushing northward, but it does look like Kaiser's going to fall back. He went for shield. Kind of surprised he didn't go for a missile launch. I feel like being a little bit more effective, especially for taking out this base in the west or poking and prodding at this. We do see those forces from Klaus moving in, but I feel like that's a little bit too late. They're going to come into range of some units and some, especially some offense as well. The time for that attack was definitely a minute ago. And, of course, that time has passed. Offense will open up fire. Therabus will receive some fire and will fall into the yellow, but has 100 hit point regen per second for hit points and is at 11,000 mass killed. So is that five-star veterancy? Those units aren't going to get as much mileage as they probably would have had they engaged with Babel's forces. Nuke it, says Amon Ra, and Kefka is building a Galactic Colossus at the current moment, which means Team 1 probably has a nuke, given that comment. And yes, they do. One nuke is about to load here. 25 minutes almost on the clock. And this is probably a strat, not a strat rush, but a nuke rush here for Team 1. But it does help, of course, that getting a couple bases does assist with the eco in that regard. And where are we going to be able to see? Can we track it in time? Will it launch immediately or will it not? That is the question. There it goes. It is launching. Launch. There goes the missile. It is outbound. So we're going to... Hit the wrong button. There it goes. Uh, I gotta zoom. There we go. I gotta zoom out. Love this track. I love this tracking feature. It's a very cool feature. Watching the missile just sail over the top. No one's died, or at least no one will die. Hopefully, while I'm doing this little track, and we do see a couple of PD trying to shoot at units down there here for Team Two, and that uh, nuke is gonna land. Unfortunately, so that's what I looked at at the last second. Unless there's an S there's an SMD over there. It's not loaded. It hasn't fired its anti-nuke missile. And there it goes. The Colossus did get out of range, but there goes his base here for Team 2 is Kefka. And kaboom! It is done. Oh, that was the wrong button. Oh, I'm still oh, I'm still tracking. That's why I was like, what? Why am I back over there? But there it is. Team 2 is Kefka loses a ton of mass income. The game is back at about the same amount of mass income here for both teams. But that's one, two, three. 
think that's four mexes. Maybe that's three. Maybe that's just three mexes. Oh, it looks like that one wasn't hit. So, yeah, it's three mexes. Could have been a little bit over to the right. Would have grabbed that fourth T3 mex. That does have some engineers on the way. And uh, more importantly, that Colossus was finished. Which is going to be huge for their front line in the west for forcing back team one. Could just send it against Yzma and kill them off immediately. Next, Nukit says Amon Ra to his allies. Trying to assist Sheikah very much in the same way that Legend Lore is doing here for his team. And trying to say, hey, you should target this. And hey, you should target this. And hey, go after this. We do see those missiles and the bricks on the eastern side here for Team 1 Shika forcing back Babel. Babel has shield on board, We're trying to get a transport aboard that commander. Bricks are in range. They're going to target the comms transport, and there it goes. Would have been better had he just walked back, but he will be killed off. It is a 4v4 game. Legend Lord saying, just, yeah, that wasn't really the smartest move. When the transport is close to the ground, yeah, why go in transport, says Kaiser. I I don't know. Maybe he thought he could get away or the transport couldn't be targeted. But when the transports are landing like that, they can be targeted by ground units, as we have seen in a game a long time ago where a Colossus can actually suction cup that uh, transport away and actually kill the comm on board the transport. So not the best idea to land or semi-land a transport near some bricks. Probably not the best idea, obviously, by indications. We do see a chicken forcing its way forward as well against some bricks. The chicken will win that fight. Units trying to get very up and close and personal with that chicken. We'll actually force it back a little bit due to some Ravager fire starting to assist him in that regard. But that Colossus, what is, it's over here to the west. Still, Kefka doesn't want to force Yzma back. There is a chicken online. And there is a second one to the north under the control of Neo. But that Colossus could easily, with the T3 assistance, and maybe even without the T3 assistance, just take this entire base. I think he nope, isn't going to move it forward. I'm very cautious with this. I just don't understand. Just force it down their throats and kill it. There is a detachment of Percy's to the north. And they're building up here for Team 1 Sheik. But again... The longer Team 2 waits, the more defenses and units will be built. And the harder it is going to be to take that position or at least kill it off. We do see Brick respondents here from Team 2 is Klaus to intercept that from Sheika. Or Sheik, excuse me, not Sheika, but Sheik. I am saying both. But maybe, it, I mean, it's Sheika, but it depends if that the K is silent. The K is silent is definitely she. Uh, maybe it's Shia. Do it's Shia, Shika, or Sheik. Like the the character from Smash. Uh Smash uh, Smash Brawl. Uh, Super Smash I can't even I can't even speak. Wait, let's see what's going on here in the main bases here for Team Two. Again, that nuke has landed, so they have to be thinking about how to counter that. Yeah, SMD is going to be built by multiple t players now. SMD loaded here for that air grid. Not really as much of a uh, focus on the air grid here for Hat Helm. It's mainly his teammate of Kaiser doing most of the airlifting, and a lot of the ASFs just flying back and forth just to protect the main base. Team Two being very defensive. Same thing with Team One. They've a little bit farther forward, but essentially they're both doing the same thing. There's a huge group of ASFs in the northeast, though, for Sheik. And that could be very interesting if those are deployed to protect gunships or bombers or an experimental or something. And this eastern side is completely collapsed. There's really nothing defending this. Darabas still here in this position and is making his way around this little cliffs uh, and the little... Uh, what would you call this? Little plateau hill area. That's mainly a hill. Forcing his way in. Team 2 needs to counter this. There is a Colossus online here for Klaus that's probably donated by somebody on Team 2. Probably probably Kaiser because he's busy microing other things. The air being the main particular thing. And those units will be forced back there in the interim. Team 1, you have a nuke. Are you planning on ending the game? Well, they are really making artillery at 30 minutes, so... They are thinking about it. I don't see any other efforts for anything of the sort. So essentially, Team 1's nuke player of Sheik building also an artillery. Wanting to attack their player, at r attack the opponent at range. And not risk any of their own 
troops is lives, but we do see that chicken does get killed off, and the harbingers just rip, get ripped through by that ion storm. Oh, that's gotta hurt. There is a couple of missiles raining in here from the south. That Colossus does know, like, nah, I'm just gonna retreat, wait for the ion storm. But nothing really has happened. There is a glitch, and it's already been fixed by the time this video was recorded. It was actually fixed essentially by the time that the other video that I recorded wasn't yesterday, it was a couple days ago um, with oh, uh, Fong's tactical missile. He's, he's in a couple games with a lot of tactical missiles. But anyway, one, one Billy Nuke in particular with the Billy Nuke icon. Uh, there was a glitch where experimental wrecks just disappeared for some reason. And the devs did fix that very quickly. Obviously, that is kind of game-breaking. Especially with if you throw you know, four chickens at the front line and all of them disappear, all that mass goes not to the opponent, so you can just keep throwing mass at your opponent and not even have to worry about it. Anyway, this game is an example of that glitch in effect, and it's been remedied. But here we go. Multiple ASFs engaging over the top of this force of... Bricks and Colossus. There is no AA in the mix. Unfortunately, here for Team 2 would have been a well-placed amount of AA. And Team 2 looks like they're going to lose the air fight. The gunships just sitting away, going after the Colossus. Of course, the ASF's trying to target all the ASFs for Team 1. And it's not enough. They try to cut the losses and going after more of those gunships, but it doesn't matter. Team 1 is in air dominance territory. Not even in territory. They have the air dominance. Here at 32 minutes on the clock, a group of Percy's forcing that front line as well. Team one, T1 one PD trying to be built up. Some of those Percy's will divert to the north, but they do have a decent amount of range on them, so they should be able to be fine to deal with all those engineers and PD. Bricks, I mean, there's not enough of them. They're going to kill a couple of those Percy's, but not enough to really make it worth it. Black says Legend Lord, go T3 Radar says... I'm on Raw, so again, lots of assistance coming out from the dead players on both teams. And the mass assassination has commenced, trying to airlock Team 2 as the best they can with those ASFs from Neo. Neo trying to protect those gunships. Going after the defensive line in the east, lots of T2AA trying to be built. That's going to be denied immediately. And a force on the ground of a bunch of bricks forcing its way southward. And we do see a couple, not a couple being one, of those Rambo preset commanders here from Kaiser. And that's one way to fight a lot of T3, but the gunships are still a threat to be dealt with. And there's no AA in this army, and there's really nothing over here to fight this. I mean, yeah, T2 AA needs to be built up as well as T3, but that's going to get killed off as well. T3 A being spanned up as quickly as it can be from... Kaiser going after the broadswords, of course, because they are the main threat here. That's the only unit that can attack the ground at the current moment. We're going to get a lot of value out of this, killing off multiple T3 mexes, plus forcing Team 2 to just build a bunch of AA, which isn't a bad thing, but, uh, again, having to distract from other projects is definitely a plus. ASF and interceptors, anything to throw at these gunships. T3 P-Gen's going down. That's going to hurt the eco at least a little bit. Oh, that does explode. Kill off a couple of engineers. Second P-Gen. Will it be killed off? Yes, it will kill off a decent amount of engineers in that engagement. And there's really not really an air grid here for Team 2's hat helm, so it's not a huge issue. But with all of the ASFs dead here for Team 2 and Team 1, Team 1 still retains the largest air force. And that is huge here. We even see just spy planes being used as a... Uh, and she just decoy ASFs. But it's Armagers versus Bricks, and I will go with Bricks every day of the week. T2PD going to be spammed up as well, but those Bricks are going to force their way through. That brick wall can either defend or attack. It is a very versatile unit. More PD coming into range, of course, and those Bricks are probably going to have to be retreated for the time being. But still more and more territory on this eastern side for Team 2 is just being lost by Sheik. Sheik is making a very good... Uh, play for the MVP of the game artillery now online and the nuke also loaded as well once again hasn't launched it yet wants to probably take out some SMD and then launch it as evidenced by SMD 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 everywhere has SMD you get SMD everyone gets SMD it's like everybody on Oprah getting a car but can I be in that audience can I get a free car that'd be nice team 2 has pushed back Yzma on this western side and that Colossus is actually going after Yzma's commander as I speak. 
And there it goes. Team one loses another player. It's a 3v4 game here at 39 minutes. Sorry, 34 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, like the Colossus being assaulted by some Whalers and Broadswords trying to get out of range and trying to get out of dodge. But unfortunately for him, he will not make it very much past the uh, little valley here. And uh, it's just that mass is going to be here for Team 1 to scoop up. Oh, I forgot. It's not because uh, maybe it's not all of the experimentals. Let's see, let's watch the Colossus. It does, it does disappear. Okay, so it, it is every experimental. Very annoying. But uh, again, it was fixed, so it's one of those, oh, it's a game-breaking glitch. It's unplayable. It's already been fixed. Uh, somebody commented again on that other video a couple of days ago already stating that it was fixed. So not a uh, thing to worry about. And uh, those casts, those video, those games that were done within that time frame of the glitch, there's not that many of them. So it's not a huge, huge issue. I hear it. Where is it? There it is. The Awasa Bomber is online here for Team 1's Derebus. Going to take out that artillery base up in the middle of that plateau. Love to see it. Very, very precise use of that bomber. Trying to do, again, strategic bombing. It's not a T3 strategic bomber. It's an experimental one. But it's essentially a strap bomber, but just very much to the max. Gonna land going after that Soothsayer. We'll take out the shields. Will it kill off the Soothsayer underneath? Yes, it will. So taking out a decent amount of the vision here for team two. There it goes. You saw it just went whoop. There it went. Does take a lot of energy to run that Soothsayer, but it does provide vision, which is very, very useful. I, I feel like the eye is probably a little bit more useful because you can put it where you want it. But uh, the Suse is more of a just kind of in the area kind of thing. AA trying to be spammed up as quickly as they can be. But uh, that experimental now at 37,000 mass killed at one star veteran, so getting 50 hit point a second regen. And it will be either control cade or just put in the main base to hide. But counter artillery is launching here from Team 2's position. It is an emissary surrounded by Cybran Hegens and a UEF shield. All you need is a Seraphim. Uh, unit or structure or whatever and that's all the factions right there it is just artillery versus artillery second artillery going to be built here by Sheik and he has that nuke and we're going to get a second one loaded here pretty shortly team one are they going for in any other artillery or any backups it's, looks like another Awasa bomber is about to be launched from the platform crab going to get annihilated once again by broadswords and the whalers team one just pumping out those gunships is making team two fuel every single experimental that gets killed off there goes the mass there it goes it disappeared and nuke will launch where is it going this time it is outbound from team one's chic once again and it's going into the east for this position position is not shielded by smd which means it is going to land very precise use of the nuke wants to use it when they have the advantage and know that it will land. And two Alversaw bombers are flying over to see what's going on. And there they go. They're going after that Colossus. Dual bombers are inbound. And it's going to hurt that Colossus, especially with those gunships just demolishing everything here. Leave nothing alive. All the gunships get killed off by the bomber. And, of course, kaboom kills off that amount of uh, infrastructure there. ASF's tussle once again. There's a lot more AA that's been built in the meantime. But unfortunately here for Team 2 still they don't have... Uh, they kind of have the numbers. Oh, that Awasan's going to get eaten. Oh, it's going to kill off a lot of AA though. The Rambos are going to be perfectly fine with their 40,000 hit point shielding. And second Awasan will go after some mass points here. The AA proving very uh, annoying to deal with. And there goes the Colossus once again here for Team 2. Just losing experimental after experimental bomb. We'll land on top of those Rambos. Actually, no, a little bit to the west of it. Excuse me. Actually, we'll kill off some friendly bricks. Ooh. Ouch is what I have to say to that is ouch. But those SACUs are getting ripped to shreds by just the sheer brick wall that they're facing down. And that's going to end up in disastrous territory. 
T3 AA again going after the Whalers, and I do understand going for T3, but T2 would be faster, and the flak due to the you know gunship kind of just sitting there, especially with the ASF now just sitting here, would get huge value and just constantly damaging those units. Another nuke outbound here from Team One Sheik going after a obviously another position, actually down south, going after this position. It's a lot of units that are going to die, plus that fire base would open up a lot of territory for Team One to use the land. Coming, especially with this group of Percy's down southwest. Huge openings here for Team One. Sheik, again, I think if Team One wins the game at this point, I might just give it to Sheik just because of the sheer number of just plays. You had the nuke on Kefka's base. You've had the nuke just, you know, landing every single time. Groups of units just constantly bombarding both the east and the western side of the map here against Team Two. And it's not looking good for Team Two. They do have it in artillery going for a second one as we speak. But I don't see much of anything else here for Team 2 to fight Team 1. And again, you got to have a plan to end the game, not necessarily to survive it. It does look like some of the artillery was able to knock out at least one of the artilleries for Team 1. The second one wasn't even going to be finished. So at least for the time being, Team 2 has that advantage in going after the air grid here for Neo 2000. So we have Team 1's Darabus getting his toes dipped a little bit in the air game just due to the bombers that he's pumping out and he's just sending that straight forward not even just worrying about the ASFs and that goes to show that team one is very confident in their ASF prowess and just the air control in general just gonna fly it right in group of bricks just gonna feel the pain there it goes oh right in the middle of that grouping oh kills off most of them the other bricks from cheek will just move in and kill off those bricks here from Klaus and Team 2 is just getting ripped to shreds by those bombers here this game. I mean, Darabus is also making a good uh, play for, you know, MVP. He killed off the first player of the game. That'd be Legend Lord, the highest ranked player on Team 2. He's really been just a very annoying force on this eastern side for Team 2 to deal with. Looks like the Almasa actually given over to Neo. And we even have a couple of Harbingers taking some pot shots at that bomber. But again, Team 2 just losing territory. This is their main base territory, and Team 1, I mean, not that they have a foothold in it, but they're just, you know, like, hey, we're just going to run in and destroy everything. See you, bye. More T3 mixes going down. TMD, I mean, over here to the west. That's not really going to do a whole lot against Bricks. And there's just whatever Team 2 can throw at this attack is just going to be thrown at it. They might make a play for the artillery. That might be very interesting, but we do see... Again, a lot of AA trying to prevent any sort of gunships from coming in. ASF's going to do their job and trying to take out the ASFs from Team 1. I don't feel like Team 2 is going to be able to either make air really work due to the sheer number that Team 1 has, plus the fact that they're constantly on the defensive, not, raking, not really making offensive plays. And those bricks are coming in for that emissary that's being constructed. Unfortunately for them, the Galactic Colossus has just been finished off. This could be enough to force back this push. Actually, not force it back, just demolish it. But Bricks trying to do what they can to pierce the shields. They're being assisted as best they can, targeting the Pigeons. Of course, Team 1 PD spanned up as well for defensive measures. And the Colossus starting to rip through that. Pigeon is going to go down. There goes one. There goes the Emissary that was being built. The first one that was you know, there for a while still there. And that Pigeon is going to go down, and the Emissary, oh, oh, you have to control, you have to, uh, you know, reclaim it so that way it doesn't blow up. Oh, it's close. Deal goes online, but the Emissary does get killed off. Team 2 loses their artillery. That was their essentially their only advantage in the game. I was uh, over the top, just ruining Team 2's day as well. Going to bomb, and, ooh, you're going to go after... Nope, going to impact the shield, so not going to kill Klaus. But does take some hit points off him, but the rest of that is just done and dusted. Here comes another Awasa bomb. Just going to go for it. No. Not going to drop your bomb. You make me a liar. He's going to say, hey, look, there's a... Uh, nope, yep, and there it went. There it is. Okay, then. Don't drop... <laughs> I see how it is. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on. Okay, then don't do it. <laughs> fine and with the glitch going on right now the mass that's being quote-unquote donated by all of these bombers is not being invested in anything because it's not there anymore because it disappears 
So definitely a lot of experimentals have died this game that could have been scooped up by both teams to reclaim. I mean, Team 2 is at 240, which they should be because Team 1 is constantly attacking them. But in terms of generated, Team 1 is slightly ahead at 1.4 versus 1.3. I saw 1.5. There it goes for a second. The Duke, is it going to get some assistance? No. Looks like he's just going to sit there for the time being. The nuke is going to launch once again the fourth nuke of the game just from one player. And where is it going? It's going for this position. The SMD is down, question mark? There's one over here. It might have enough range on it. The SMD is down over here. What? There was an SMD in this base, but it might have been killed off. There is a Mavor going to be constructed here, but that might not finish if this nuke comes in and just wrecks that air grid. But I do think that uh, SMD might... No, it's not in range. Ooh, this is bad here for Team 2. That air grid's going to go up in smoke. All of Kaiser Wilhelm's work will be, I mean, just gone. And there it goes. Will they clip the comm? No, but the entire thing is dead. GG, <laughs> says Kaiser Wilhelm. And he might just control K after this because that is devastating. That air grid, couple of air facilities still online, but man, one, two, three, four, five mixers are down. That nuke has been very vital here for Team 1 Sheik for just punish punishing Team 2. 200,000 mass killed just from that one nuke. It's paid for itself and then some. Another Awasa online. Colossus coming in, going after Team 1 spam. All these Zuri going to just get lasered to the face. A couple of bricks coming in for support. That Colossus not really going to get a lot of mass killed. Eh, I mean, some mass, but not a lot. Awasa going to go westward, going after this Colossus to the, oh, the west. Going to drop its payload and go after another run. There it goes, landing in the middle of a couple of those flat cannons. And right next to that Colossus' feet. Not looking good here for Team 2 in the game. Teleporter has been started here for Klaus. He does not have lasers, so he still has to build that. He could go after Sheik right here. There's a couple of, I mean, this, uh, I mean, this triads here. I don't think, uh, that, oh, yeah, that's in range. So you could probably get away with going here. I think the laser would still reach. But then you run into the issue of there's a bunch of Team 1 PD here for Neo, so... Again, if you're going to go after assassination of comms, don't think that's going to work. The Colossus doesn't even care about that line of Zooey. Just, just going to ignore it. I think that was an Omni sensor that just went down. Colossus not targeting the mass in front of it. That's um, kind of disappointing for that Colossus. There's, t there's three T, three mixes. But it's going to go after the chicken. And unfortunately here for that Colossus, that Colossus, even if he wins that fight, will be severely damaged because of it. And not really get into the base for Derivus. And we even see Strap Bombers. Yeah, they're not going to win that fight. Sorry, Colossus, not going to win that fight. A squadron of Strap Bombers comes over the top and takes out a chunk of hit points. ASFs will engage once again. And those ASFs outbound here for Kaiser are going to go straight for those. Bomber is going to kill off at least a few of them. Nice turn there. Gets most of them in that engagement. And the Colossus is done. The chicken does not die. There goes the mass. There's still, I think, a couple of bombers that made it out. Two of them. One of them. Actually, both of them were fine. The other ones that got shot were killed. But again, like I said, look at the east. Just dead. 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 Was dead. Now is fine. But at this stage in the game, 46 minutes on the clock. Kind of devastating here for Team 2. Team 1 holds most of the cards. They don't hold all of them. Team 2 now has another artillery online. The, that's this emissary right here. Looks like Klaus is having some power issues. He's going for that teleporter, of course. That would explain it. And Team 1, again, still has a wreck for that Duke. The first, the first of the new line of Dukes is going to be finished off here. I don't, again, I don't see any other play to end the game other than Team 1 Sheik. You know, Strat Bombers, we have Nuke, we have Artillery, we have... He's not going for air in particular. He did for a time being. He's kind of just left it alone. Kind of letting his teammate of Neo handle most of that. The Colossus here for uh, Klaus still wrecking shop, but uh, is receiving fire once again. And now there's a chicken coming in from the west. Colossus will win that fight most handedly, but still receive a ton of wounds from it. 
He's going to get probably a veterancy from it at a minimum, so 10 so 10% more hit points going to be on board. That laser, oh, because he's moving. Why is that laser missing? And there's a second chicken to the north. That chicken will win that fight, unfortunately, here for Team 2. And with the glitch in effect, just jumping mass isn't really a huge issue unless it, I mean, for, for experimentals, not E3 or whatever units in general, just, just those T4. Emissary is not able to crack the shields on its own, but there is stuff that is not shielded that they can easily go after. Oh, there goes that pigeon. That's gonna hurt, but artillery is now online. Here for Team 1, there's another nuke loaded here. Second, Duke, and third, and fourth going to be... There's a mass right here. I know it's only 4,000, but it's right there. Just, it's right there. Go for it. it I mean, it's something. and You can get a nice little head start. The uh, suits there destroyed once again here for Team 2. Just can't seem to keep that thing online. And what's going down south? T3 Air Facility going to be rebuilt once again. But to Kaiser's credit, he did not quit like a lot of players would do. Well, not a lot, but some players would do. I have seen them like, okay, my air grid's done. See you, bye. And he's like, no, I'm going to stay in it. So it is uh, honorable of him to fight it out to the last. Second emissary going to be built, going to be shielded very properly now. Not just one shielded, but more shields. And again, even if you had 30 shields or 50 shields and 100 shields, I still would say you do not have enough shields. You will, you will not impress me with the... Unless you cover the entire map in shields, you still do not have enough shields because you could build bubble... You could build mobile shields. You could build the UEF con like SACUs that have shields on board, like the, the, the bubble shields. You know, there's asylums. There's T3 Seraphim ones. There's a whole bunch of shields that you just also need. There's never... You can never have enough... You also have to have an SMD. If you don't have that, then uh, shields mean nothing. So, we do see two chickens here versus the one Colossus here for Team Two. But those <laughs> Percy's are um, just standing next to it, being like, "Yeah, this is fine. This, 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 this is my life now." Nuke gonna launch once again, going after the base here for Kepka. Five SMD missiles are loaded, so that nuke will be the first one of a long line of nukes that will not land. Unless Team 1 has some glorious plan of getting in and killing that off. I mean, the gunships would be a nice idea for that. And the chickens as well. The chickens aren't going to make it, though, in time. And that, like I said, that nuke is not going to land. The Mavor is started once again here for Kaiser, but it's going to take a while to finish that. He's going to build another SMD to protect it. That's how he lost his base in the first place, because his SMD must have gotten killed off, and I just didn't notice it. Like I said, that nuke was destroyed. Artillery raining in. How's that emissary doing? Oh, lost a couple of its pigeons, but it's still fine. Needs more shields. As I say, Team 1, how's your artillery doing over here on this side? Uh, perfectly fine. Not really a huge issue still. It's mocking me. It's just mocking me at this point. Astuwe going to be built here by Team 1's Neo 2000. Going to get his toes dipped into the nuclear game. It's still... Besides those I was saw bombers that I saw, that's really it from Darabus. He's only producing I mean it's three seventy, I say only, but three seventy mass is I mean you could do a decent amount with that. But the you know, floodgates, I mean they're essentially open bar a couple of facilities that are online. There's a crab here, chicken's gonna be forced back, there's a ton of spam from Darabus. I feel like at this point I could just speed it up a little bit because you kinda see the direction the game is going. Unless team two Mounts a comeback and kills off this entire base and this entire base. Don't know if it's going to work. The team one, I mean, isn't producing, out producing team two. Team two is now, but team two is losing territory constantly. Just the amount of bricks on this eastern side is just devastating. The chicken does get killed off by the megalith. The chicken for team one's derivative is going to hold position for the time being. And it looks like uh, Chicken did get in on top of Kefka's commander. Kefka, you got Kefka. You got you got to move. You you, you got to move. That uh, Iron Storm's gonna kill you if you don't move. There's some ra the RAS presets here that are gonna go up in smoke. There they a couple of them go. Ion Storm underneath the shield. That shield's not gonna protect you. Gotta get underneath shield coverage, Kefka. No, there he goes. He gets killed off by the Ion Storm, and his SMD goes down. That is a great move by Neo2001. It is now a 3v3 kill SMD, says Yzma. 
Well, uh, the SMD is dead, and Kepska's base is open for a nuclear hellfire. And is there a nuke loaded? It will be in a couple of seconds. Ooh, that's painful. That is painful here for Team 2 to lose. Kefka, I mean, it's... I don't know why you didn't move your comm sooner. You definitely probably got a warning saying, hey, your comm is under attack. And you went and looked. There was a chicken. Like, I should move that. Air Greed says... What? Air Greed says, I'm on Ra. Oh, Air Grid. Okay, I, was, I read Air Greed. Go Nuke says, Yzma. Yeah, the SMD is down. Don't know why it was here. And not over here don't know anyway that uh, nuke will launch it will nuke that base if it doesn't that's definitely a disappointment spy planes over the top get a nice readout on what's going on on that side of the map here for team 2 team 2 still scouting so that's good to see again we see a line of AA going after a chicken and we see a ton of <laughs> Rambo preset commanders going after a chicken they're not seraphim with the, with the overcharge but uh 40,000 hit points, 55,000 in total. There goes the chicken. We can just watch in real time as the chicken wreck just disappears. There it goes. It's gone. It's dead. It doesn't even exist. And there go those Rambos in a retreat. And the, oh, here comes the teleportation from Team 2's Klaus. There it goes. It's going after Sheikah's commander. Triads open fire. They have to turn for a second. So Sheikah is dead. Team 1 will lose probably one of their most valuable players, if not the most. And obviously, Team 2's Klaus will die in that engagement just due to the... Tr he just couldn't get out of range of the PD. And the uh, bomber lands, and it doesn't exist anymore. So again, there's a lot of mass that could have been on Team 2's you know, doorstep and coffers that just doesn't really exist. Don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, it's now a 2v2 game. And I feel like Team 1, again, has, they have the map control at a minimum. They've hemmed in Team 2. They're trying to do their best, but I don't see one solidified front line. There's a you know, large gap, large gap, large gap, smaller gap, but still there. And uh, not as bad of a large gap, but let's say small gap. Team 2 has been on the defense of the entire game, which in some games does work out in your favor because all the mass comes to you. You scoop it up, put it into something else. But with all of the experimentals not dropping their mass, that's 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 mass that you're not going to get, unfortunately. And that's definitely punishing for the defensive player. The Colossus will die. Kill off probably 6 or 5 of those bricks and then will evaporate into nothingness. Artillery once there once again. The artillery from Team 1 focused on the emissaries. Team 2 still has that going for them as well as the Maver that's at half percent, com or half percent, uh, half look completed, almost at half loaded. That doesn't make any sense. There's another nuke in the clipper for Team 1's Derebus. It was Sheik, but he is dead. And there is a Hostuwe that also has a nuclear missile loaded. So two nukes online here for Team 1. Both of them have one loaded. And we do see a chicken coming up against a crab. And that chicken will win that fight and go after the bricks. Oh, those bricks probably could have killed off that chicken had the Megaloth not crushed him to death. And the chicken might die to Tickle Cannon. It'll take a while, but probably will die to that if it doesn't move. Rambo presets here in the east trying to hold back all of these bricks. It are doing a decent job with all the lines of PD being built. But again, Team 2 just been on the offensive the entire game. I was uh, going after a solitary T3 mechs. I mean, if you just didn't like that mechs in particular, I understand. But definitely a waste. Nuke is going to land here. There it goes. Finally, it's going to land where it should have gone a couple of minutes ago. And Chicken chasing. Where did... What? Did it just walk this way? Where did that come from? That's very weird. Anyway, there goes the Ion Storm. SMD being assisted as much as it can be. Another chicken coming in. This crab needs to divert. It's going to target the SMD and prevent the destruction of that missile. I mean, it's not going to be in range, but at least the second one that might be launched. 
Grab, gonna fire off a couple of rounds. Will it be enough? Will it kill off the chicken before it reaches the SMD? Uh, the pigeon is still alive. And kaboom, takes out a huge chunk of that Western base here for that Kefka, you know, essentially donated to Kaiser at the end of his life. And, and team one, I mean, they have a nuke, they have an artillery, they have another nuke, and they have uh, our sub bombers. Team two, they have a Mavor that's almost that's half done. Another Awasub bomber that they have to deal with. Oh, the oh the bomb landed in the air. Oh, ooh, that's a lot of ASFs that died there. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Uh, ooh, that did not. I felt that. That did not feel good. Here come the gunships. Now with a lot of the ASFs dead, I mean, even if the ASFs, that, the ones that died from that explosion, didn't die, the amount of ASFs from Derbis would be enough. Another bomber, I mean, he is just pumping those things out. And I think in any other game, like I said, the amount of mass that's being quote-unquote donated to Team 2 would be enough to turn around the game. But here come the Whalers going after the dual emissary emplacement. We have Hat Helm right here standing as his artillery gets eviscerated by the gunships. There's not that many uh, gunships left, but here comes the bomber anyway. He says, hey, thanks for clearing the road there. I'm going to just joint that kill from you guys. Kills off both of those emissaries and dies over here, and its wreck disappears once again. How is the Mabor going? Well, it's in the green, so above 75%. Again, even if this gets built, there's the amount of broadswords over here to the north. We have a bunch of Rambo presets trying to build AA, doing their best to do so. Again, Flak would be faster and probably do more damage, honestly, in this engagement due to the uh, broadswords kind of just sitting there and just firing at everything. Team 2 no longer has artillery in terms of emissary. One Duke is online still. And two nukes are online. If that Mavor finishes, it might be what Team 2 needs to come back. Yzma says, hey, there's a Mavor here, by the way. And I think the gunships are given the order to go after it. They're going southward. ASF's doing their best to try to intercept those gunships. There's a couple of AA emplacements on the way. But there are more gunships. And there's a bomber inbound. Yeah, this is not going well. Artillery now will focus on this. Will that Mavor finish off? They're going to try to shield as best they can. Gunship versus gunship. You hardly see it, but you do. There go the gunships. They're going to rip through the shielding. It's not going to matter how many engineers you have on it. There goes the bomber just to solidify it. And the mass disappears because it's an experimental. And kaboom, takes out all the gunships again. And that's a friendly fire on that Awasaw bomber. It's just devastating. Kaiser's just going to stand there and receive fire from the heavens, or at least the sub low couple, maybe, I don't know what, a couple hundred feet up in the air. There goes the bomber. It will land. Will he die by Pigeons or will he die by bomb? I think it might be to Pigeons. Let's see what it says. Yep, it was by Pigeons, so that was definitely Darabus's kill. And now it's General Hathelm versus the world. Darabus loses another bomber. And it disappears. <laughs> it must be so frustrating for Strategic Team 2. Launch, Nuke will launch on top of General Hathelm's position. Actually, almost will headshot him, and he will just leave anyways and concede the game. That is it here. Team 1 wins the game at 59 minutes and 22 seconds. I feel like I think Sheik still deserves MVP, even though they did die to Telemazer. I feel like they did a ton of work with the Nuke. They did a ton of work on the southwest and the northeast, really just hemming in Team 2. You know, once they died, Darabus came in, just pumped out a couple more bombers and a couple more gunships and called it a day. I feel like overall, Sheik definitely des deserves MVP of the game. Let me know down in the comments. If you felt the same way, please, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, hit that bell for notifications when I do post on the on the channel I post every single day at a minimum and there are days where I do post two videos not necessarily faff but I do post one faff cast a day again thank you so much for watching to the end of the video share this video with your family your friends your pets especially your pets and I will see all of you in the next one